It's time for Ella. It's me, the boy. And I'm gonna be here. So everyone knows my noise. My, my noise. <laughs> I'm a loud boy. Anyway, I'm continuing Air of Darkness, a Star Wars fanfic by Silverstorm X23. And I'm doing this because I feel like it. And basically, I've never made a decision based on uh, considering consequences before. Instead, I have only acted upon compulsion my whole life for everything. So, here's more of the fanfic. Uh, he just sort of copy-pasted the author's note again. It's the same one. Um, and also the date is the same. So if you were reading this sequentially, you might think that you're just reading the same chapter again. But you're not. Anyway, waking up to the smell of trash was not an experience Vaxor hoped to repeat. Remember Vaxor? He vaccinates, so he's very strong. Um, and he jumped into a ship, and it had tra trash in it. Um, I don't like the way this sentence is structured and I would do it again for different. <laughs> I would do it again for it to change it. It took a while for him to realize why he was here. Memories of pain flashed through his head. His mother had been killed, period. By clones, period. By the glorified Republic, period. Anathera! We had this discussion a second ago, which is don't it. Unless it is very important, do not. He remember being chased down the streets. No, you were chased over the streets on the rooftops. I remember that because he had been ratted by a civilian. Ratted out. I'm just going to interrupt myself. I'm going to jam myself in here like a, like a Texas man covered in butter. Walking up onto a bunch of hay bales. Diving right on in there to check and see the health of the hay bales. Because he's covered in butter. Whoa, what? Who? He would never forget his face. <laughs> the, the civilian. It had all been because of Quinlan Voss. A Jedi! It's capitalized in italics. How had he found them, though? They had been hiding in the Outer Rim, on a planet the Republic didn't even have charted! I guess that's why they only had a rope bridge. <laughs> he only had one thing going through his mind. Rage. Yes. Use your anger. I don't know the line. <laughs> Vaxor noticed that the cargo hold appeared to seem more empty. Appeared to seem more empty. Presuming that they had dropped off a supply of trash. Noticed? Presu eh, debatable. He was surprised he hadn't been noticed. Vaxor realized... Vaxor noticed. Vaxor realized he'd needed to eat if he were to last much longer. That is a good uh, observation for you to make. He was starving. That is also a good observation. He began to rummage through the junk and found a partly functioning X-8 Night Sniper, an elegant model of a blaster. Wow, lucky how you found a gun in the trash. <laughs> oh my god, do this anywhere but Star Wars. <laughs> and you would be peed upon by me. He stuffed it into his coat pocket. He found a little bug that seemed to be a alive, so he twisted its head around a few times and shoved it down his throat. Aren't you, like, two? I don't know how old you are, but you're not gonna eat a bug. <laughs> Unless you already were accustomed to doing that for fun. In which case, you might. I might. He looked out the window and saw that they were leaving the atmosphere of a sandy planet. Tatooine? I've always wondered about the name Tatooine, but I guess that's a tangent for another time. Or maybe Jakku, he thought. Jakku! <laughs> I don't actually remember that one. It sounds familiar. But I don't know anything about it. You know, they call me the, the superhero Star Wars boy. It, it's true, they do. And the reason they call me that is because whenever I come up with a, a Star Wars fact that I do not understand, I make it up and nobody knows. Jakku is a planet which is covered in tiny fleas. And the fleas make up the sand, which is why he look he take it look like sand. 
Everyone thinks it's sand, but no, it's really tiny fleas. It's true. Moreover, the civilization there is cannibalistic all the way. If anyone dies, they eat them. Now, they don't kill people to eat them. They sustain themselves on the fleas. But if somebody does die, for example, for not having water, you know, because there's very little on a flea planet, then they eat those. It's considered a sign of respect. I don't know exactly why I was Scarface for that for that bit, but I was. <laughs> it's it's Scarface, the Star Wars liar. <laughs> the the fan fiction, <laughs> as I was doing. <clears throat> okay. The ship began to accelerate, and he began flying to the back of the compartment. The stars seemed to stretch out, and he realized they were entering hyperspace. You s okay? So you did you did have a window, so this isn't exactly like a like a break, like in the canon of the story. But I do have a a titchy little issue. Aren't you in the back? I guess maybe you'd see the weird star thingy. Also still in the back anyway, right? Hmm. I think dubitable. What am I looking at? He felt a rough... He felt, he felt a rough... He felt a rush of exhilaration as the ship launched into an extreme speed. This lasted for a few seconds until suddenly it stopped, throwing Vaxor to the other side of the room. He saw in the distance a brownish-reddish planet with large metal blotches. It was Plague World. It was Lotho Minor. Lotho Minor. Minor is not capitalized here, which is false. The planet grew larger as they headed towards it. They entered the atmosphere, heading towards a humongous trash heap. Hmm. I remember, because I remember in the new Thor movie, they went to the trash planet. And I'm going to pretend these are the same planet. And somewhere, Hulk is fighting Thor. Somewhere on the planet. It's more fun to think about. <laughs> <laughs> a large metal machine was blowing fire from its mouth. That's that that that's not very descriptive. <laughs> you can't just say that and expect me to like accept it. A large metal machine was blowing fire from its mouth. Okay. Quickly decelerating, the ship found a spot to land. So it's large enough that you saw it from space. <laughs> this large metal machine. Okay. Vaxor realized he was about to be thrown off. The large door opened and the dusty air began to get in his eyes. He should use the force. <laughs> so earnest. He should use the force. A large gust began to throw trash from the ship's hold, and Vaxor tried to fight the booby. He by the booby. He tried to find something to grab onto. However, a large chunk of metal... There's a lot of largeness going on. There's large metal blotches, the planet growing larger, the large metal machine, a large gust, and a large chunk of metal. Hit him in the head, and he lost his grip, falling out of the ship and onto the dusty ground. Hey, onto the dusty ground. He stumbled around for a bit, watching the junk ship exit the atmosphere, and then he passed out. <laughs> I do want to note one thing, and I think this needs to be adhered to more in fiction. If you knock someone out, they're out for, like, two minutes tops. Because after that, they start to get brain damage <laughs> from being physically knocked unconscious. Or they already had it, and that's why they're out for so long. So, I actually am unsure on which of those is true. But I do know that if a person is out for more than two minutes, they probably have brain damage for some reason. And so... In a fight scene, when you knock a guy unconscious, you gotta get out of there. <laughs> like, you're, you, you know, you can't tie him up and, and put him in your torture basement and whack his balls with a piece of rope, okay? Good scene. Funny scene. Mads Mickelson. What was I talking about? The fan fiction. Correct. He st <laughs> Vaxor woke up with a large bruise on his forehead. The largeness is out of control. There's so much big happening. A snake was slinking around, and he saw random junk everywhere. And he saw is a separate sentence, which it should not be. I have to get off this stinking planet. I have to get off this stinking planet. I, you know what? He's Scarface. He is Scarface, the Star Wars liar, I think. Clouds were forming, and Vaxor knew he needed to find shelter. He saw a small cock. P 
pit that wasn't very badly damaged, so he ran over. He couldn't get the visor to open. He needed to find shit. He needed, he needed to get... Okay, so he wants to get off the stinking planet, of course. There's a snake. Snakes. Star Wars canon. Clouds were forming, and he needed to find shelter. So he wants to get off, and he needs to find shelter. He found a cockpit. Is it just the cockpit? He couldn't get the visor open. He tugged and pushed, but it was sealed. It seemed his fate was to die from acid rain. That's not what acid rain is. He closed his eyes as the downpour began. His back stung as the rain burned through his clothing. No. He roared and clenched his fists. The cockpit, the cockpit began to open. He raised his fists, feeling the pain rushing through him. His back was burning. His eyes were stinging. All he felt was pain and rage. He raised his hands. <laughs> reduce this by like 10 or 15 words and the clock pit the clock pit the clock pit it's like a mosh pit but for timekeepers that's not a funny cut that <laughs> he hopped inside as the ship came to life the controls activated and he shut the cockpit as the storm began to rise the cockpit resisted the resisted the rain and fell asleep the cockpit did, not him. He was up, and the cockpit was asleep. What seemed like days later, Vaxor woke up. The bruise was gone. The bruise was gone? It was a large bruise. It knocked him out. It would be yellow. Again, I speak from experience. I've had a big old yellow bruise, and it's gross, and it hurts. And he was still in the cockpit. He opened it up and found the key code in a small compartment. He got out to get a better look. It seemed to be the cockpit of an E... Of an eat of an Eta, an Eta two interceptor. I can work with this, he said, aloud. He looked around and found some damaged wings that he repaired using his ingenuity and the force. Of course, this is what this is like the core, the the crux of a lot of fan fiction, especially fan fiction of certain types like Star Wars and Harry Potter. The main character in these series is always super OP for like one reason or another. I know that they don't often appear that way, but they are for sure. And like then the fan fiction authors think that that's okay to do, you know. But the thing is that you're not telling an original story, and we already got the version of the story with the OP guy. Do something cooler, do something more interesting. I do not need the OP, sir. It seemed like a Jedi had crashed there and left their ship. Is Jedi capitalized? I don't know. Might be. He welded the pieces together with his lightsaber and opened up the back with it. He attached a small hyperdrive he found. He added some rudimentary blasters, a damaged shield generator, and some mis missile launchers. Why on earth... Are you equipping this? Aren't you still a child? I'm confused. I thought you were always a child. You might be an adult, but I have no clue. You cried. <laughs> you know? He quickly refueled by opening the oil tank on a fire breather with his lightsaber. So it wasn't that big. I, saw, I thought you saw it from space. <laughs> and carrying it back down to the sheep. He found a rotted corpse with a pack full filled of some thermal detonators, a bunch of credits, a grappling hook, and a gauntlet that shot out small darts. Finally, he custom made a slot to insert his hand to control the ship using the force. I don't even know what that means. I'm not even going to try. Dust went flying as Vaxor prepared to take off. The ship began to hover into the air, and it held together. The shabby ship began to exit. That's what it's called. The SS Shabby Ship began to exit the atmosphere and Vaxor activated the shields so the ship wouldn't burn up in the atmosphere. That's an, I don't think that's how it is. I think when you come back, you might catch fire. I think going out, you're more or less okay. I wouldn't... I don't know. I've never been to space, but I think that's how it is. He set the router to Corellia, where he could get repairs. He then activated the hyperdrive and prayed that his ship wouldn't get destroyed in the middle of the jump. Three, two, one, and he hit the button for light speed. Next chapter just says he died, and then the story ends. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but that would be very good. So that was the very short... Uh, the only reason the clip is this long is because I went off on some major tangents, and they were very fun. <laughs> Anyway, um, that was the very short second chapter of Air of Darkness. In terms of scope of all the fan fiction I've ever read, 
it's not the worst. It's just like not good. But that can basically be said for fan fiction as a whole. So, unless you're writing it out of spite. If you write something out of spite, it's usually at least really funny. <laughs> anyway, I think, um, sh I think I, mm, no, may, okay, I will not do one more chapter yet, but if for some weird reason the three people who are listening to this clamor for it, sure, whatever, you know, I got time, uh, I got nothing but... <laughs> Uh, 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 until next time, Paul! <laughs>